Today we finished the front wall. We're gonna cut out the two posts up here, get out the laser and make sure it's perfectly plumb, gird it up. We'll also create a small three-ply post that's gonna connect from the garage door header uh, up to the top of the center of this truss. The garage door header has arrived. We bought an LVL. Um, it's overkill, but that's fine. I spec'd it at a 2x8 LVL, and I accidentally ordered a 2x10. <laughs> so, so the entire weight of this structure can probably be supported by that header, which is not necessary since there's really no weight supported at all except the uh, garage door hardware itself. We'll go pick that up today and hopefully get that installed as well, depending on how the time goes. Last post is done. It gave us a little bit of trouble. Uh, apparently we didn't know how to measure. It seems like waiting to the last post to learn that lesson is, uh, is unfortunate, but it's in there and it's, it's in good shape. The camera turned off, but we decided to put in the purlin on the ridge line. Went in pretty well. Basically we lagged it in with six inch power legs on each truss. We connected them together with two and three eighths inch ring shank nails. It looks pretty good. Uh, adds a lot of rigidity to the truss system. It was already pretty good. Uh, the way these three ply pocket posts are, the truss is really nestled in there and that provided enough support that it wasn't gonna tip over. But I still feel a heck of a lot better having the ridge line uh, connected up. We have a header, an extremely oversized header, but a header. For the rest of the day, we're gonna be finishing up this wall, uh, putting in a three ply that goes from the header up to the ridge. We got a couple girts to put in, and we're gonna try to get the diagonals for these little bits here.
This is a bit of a landmark. The diagonal lead bracing for the walls is complete. It was a royal pain in the butt. You know, we've learned so many lessons on this barn about how to build. Unfortunately, a lot of the design elements I put in place here require a lot more work, and so it's slower. And as they say, time is money. And with winter ticking on, uh, we feel the pressure to move quickly. Next, we're going to do the uh, hurricane brackets, which our inspector has requested. we're cutting the bracing for the trusses. It's a lot of different cuts and everything is on its own angle. It's piecework and it's taking forever, but we're doing it right. We're cutting to theoretical and there's no reason theoretical should not fit up there without any issues. It's, it's kind of nice to be able to cut theoretical and uh, get stuff to fit. So we have two boards that are basically the cross bracing that go from the top to the bottom of the truss. We have two boards that are the horizontal diagonals. They create a W pattern. We'll have the same set on the other side and we're still cutting those. We've been working on truss bracing and oh my god, it is so much more complicated than I ever thought it would be. Squaring up a building, it, it's hard. Yesterday we spent hours uh, just trying to plumb the first and second truss. And the problem came down to uh, the second truss having a bend at the joint in the middle. So we yanked everything around, got everything in rectangle form, and finally got that cross brace in place, which plums the first and second truss. In theory, that should plumb the rest of the trusses since we have these three braces going, going down the path. Second, we put in the first set of diagonals. They fit like a glove, so it wasn't a big deal. Where we started today was squaring up this wall with an another set of diagonal braces that go from that junction there to the corner here. And uh, in theory, that should lock everything in place and square everything up. Unfortunately, uh, this wall appears to be a little more complicated than that. It's actually kind of S-shaped. Um, I was hoping the header would provide a lot of stability, but even that has a little bit of bow in it right now. We are actually adding two new braces to this in order to get this front wall straight. Uh, those braces will go from the post on the south wall here to the post along the garage door on the east wall. And then the second one is its mirror on the east wall here to the second post on the north side. The thought is that it'll hold these two posts in place. We can get those nice and square um, before tugging on the middle. And hopefully we'll be able to get the S out of this wall. As mentioned, this whole truss bracing process is really complex. It's, you know, I guess in my mind, I thought, hey, you purchase some engineered trusts, you throw them in place and you're good to go. And what I'm finding is that's not at all true. Uh, the trusses are wobbly. They're bent in many places. Um, these trusses are just poorly manufactured. Um, sometimes you've got little metal plates on the joints. Sometimes they're huge metal plates. Half the time, the metal plates are sticking out below the wood and require them to be pounded in. And in at least one circumstance, the metal plate was missing altogether. 
um, up there. We added our own metal plate trying to put that joint back together. Yeah, these trusses are freaking awful. Menards trusses, by the way. Uh, I'll just throw that out there. They're just really cheap, really inconsistent, and the workmanship or the QA is terrible. But we'll get them going and we'll get them in place and, and you know, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, Robert's on the saw cutting these two new braces that should support the uh, corner post by the garage door here. Um, once we get that nice and squared up with these outside posts, we'll then work on the center of the header. In my mind, getting this front wall uh, straight is not just an aesthetic issue, but also for sealing this garage door. If we have a bend on this header between these two posts, we're gonna have trouble air sealing. You know, garage doors are notoriously bad anyway. If we have a three quarter inch gap on the top, then uh, wow, I don't know how you feel that, right? So we're gonna fight with it. We will likely have to get the tractor out and pull some stuff. There's so much wood in this structure at this point that Robert and I just don't have the strength to do it, especially when standing up on scaffolding. We'll start with these two posts here and then we'll see how much movement we get in the center. My guess is not much. So we've moved to the other side of the trusses and things are good. Um, both these two, end, the end truss and the second truss end are plumb. I mean, they should be, right? You plumb up one side, the other should be plumb as well. Care of all these, you know, continuous horizontal braces. So easy peasy on this side now. Um, we got the first uh, brace in and we're just installing the second brace right now. Uh, I'm doing it with power legs. I, I'd like to use nails, but the trust manufacturer was so inconsistent with their use of the metal plates that nails, I don't trust them to always go through. So we're using legs in a lot of these areas where, uh, where nails should be adequate. First set of diagonal bracing is in, going from the center of the end truss to this complicated joint here. For this joint where we added a plate up here and are nailing it in, there's just a lot of stresses that come into this one joint and we wanna make sure that it's stable. 